the nation converged across the country to remember those who perished in road accidents. The world economy said to be growing at a slower pace than anticipated. And in sports, GU and Police 11 play to a goalless draw in a Botswana Premier League match encounter. Interpreting in sign language is Amantle Babili. Good evening. Government has taken an immediate decision to set up the Motlamedi Disaster Emergency Fund to respond to any national tragedy. President Dr. Mokhaiti Masisi said this today during the National Memorial Service held in Khaboroni. Howell is among the Tuarano reports. Following the scenes of carnage due to road traffic accidents that claimed numerous lives over these past holidays, government held a national memorial service in remembrance of lives lost. One of those accidents left families mourning in its wake, affecting even some members of the PDF who amongst those mourning their loved ones. Dr. Mkhoizim Sisi made an immediate announcement of the formation of an emergency fund, dubbed Mutamedi Emergency Fund, which he said was will be mandated to respond to such incidents even in the future. Bareto, this is not a loss only to the bereaved families, but to the nation at large, considering that we are a small nation deeply interconnected. And it struck me when I was at BDF officiating at a ceremony only yesterday when I was informed that 47 members of the army were directly affected by this tragic accident right here in Khabarone. I wish to inform you that the government has set up a fund called Mutlamedi Disaster Emergency Fund to assist the bereaved families in future and details regarding this initiative will be provided in the shortest possible time. The fund will assist in future mass casualty incidents. ST Engenas representative from South Africa delivered the message of comfort to the mourners on behalf of the church founder and leader, Bishop Engenas Lekhanyani. During moments of grief and sorrow, we come together as a united front, supporting one another through shared faith and unwavering belief in the power of love and compassion. Losing those whom we love, it's inherently a sorrowful and heartbreaking experience. However, to us Christians, that is not the end. It symbolizes the beginning, the beginning of a journey that will lead to God, our Creator. South Africa has proven to be more than just a neighbor. President Masisi expressing gratitude for the relentless support they have given the nation during their time of grief. BTV News. Residents of Saroe in the central district have sent their condolences to those who lost their relatives and friends in the Limpopo road accident, as well as those who perished on road accidents. Students from Swanin Senior School and Toyota Halfway Motors honored the day by wearing black colors. On behalf of my students, I'd like to offer my condolences to the children who lost their parents in the tragic accident. Um, and I hope that the country as well will find a way of helping them in the best way they can. Relevance 
ka mo laetsa o dule le rona re bore le moteng re supa gore re utile botlhoko ra go motsa ba o ba thoka haletsweng re tla re ba gaetsu go botlhoko me modimane le lona matsetsele go mpeng le rona rena le batswana mo go kutlo botlhokong e le gore re wetse le la botswana re a dipelo tsa rona re le batswana di setsa hudwega re tshepe mo modimo re dumela gore o tla re tsa maisa mo nakong ye thata ya go tshwana le President Dr. Mokhaisi Masisi says the time frame given to the SADC chairmanship is not adequate to execute all duties one has to do. President Dr. Mokhaisi Masisi shared with the Executive Secretary of SADC, Mr. Elias Mahosi, that one year is not enough for the SADC chairman to supervise the secretariat and perform other duties that are of paramount importance to the region. He said this as Mr. Elias Mahosi paid him a courtesy visit this morning. Kiganze Kumalo reports. The Southern African Development Community Chairperson oversees the highest level of the governance structure of the SADC and controls all functions of the organization. At the moment, the region is faced with various challenges, which include poverty, lack of infrastructure, and political and security issues. And President Masisi is of the view that a one-year tenure of the chairperson is too short for the elected leader to address all these challenges. I think we also think in SADC in the way Way it reports to members. Uh, I'm personally dissatisfied about this thing of rotation of chair every year. I think it should last longer because then the, the chair can supervise the secretariat much better. Uh, right now, um, I don't think it's adequate. Um, but uh, we are thinking about uh, SADC also with respect to its role in peace building and peace maintenance, security and you know security cooperation. Matters. Um, I think it's done very well so far. Uh, As the host of the headquarters of SADC Secretariat, Botswana wishes to interact and engage more with the organization. It's been a while since we headquartered SADC here, and there ought to be um, uh, a change in 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 the the location of the headquarters here in how we interact with SADC. Um, we also have been. Uh, engaging with uh, my minister here and some of the senior officials, including the Ministry of Finance, um, Minister of State President, um, in thinking about SADC. Uh, I have also been engaging with my colleagues, uh, other heads of state, um, about uh, thinking about uh, SADC. And I think we all agreed that we can make it much more effective than it is, much more potent, much more felt, um, as it should. The, our key thing for me is to really look at projects and programs that are making a difference in the lives of the citizens of this region. I've had engagement with ICPs, for excellence, quite a broad range of them, talking about what they've supported and how they've supported us before. We think it's time, we've done enough tools, we've done enough protocols, enough agreements, uh, enough implementation plans. It's about time now to implement those things and really focus on where we're making a difference. On other issues, the president advised the SADC secretariat to take action against members who do not pay up their membership subscription on time. Kikanze Kumalo, BTV News, Khaburoni. Meanwhile, the United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, Mr. Clay Vagatete says Botswana is a role model of value chain development in Africa due to the way it does business. Mr. Gatete, who was accompanied by the president of the Arab Bank for Economic Development for Africa, Dr. C. D. Old Ta paid a courtesy call on the president this morning. The commission's mandate is to promote the economic and social development of its member states. Mr. Gatete says it is time Africa claims her spot in the global economic stage as it has vast and untapped natural resources and human capital. 
The organization plans to actively engage the private sector as a key partner for Africa's development. Moreover, he described Botswana as a perfect ground for investment due to its transparent systems and its stable democracy. Responding to his remarks, President Dr. Mokhez Masisi encouraged UNECA to consider Botswana as their first investment destination. So we chose Botswana because we know of what you have done, we know what you stand for. It's not only today, you've done it over, over time and you've been very consistent. And we thought we could start from this country and say, this is a model that anybody you want, come and see. And for the whole entire value chain, the way you do business, the accountability system that you have in place, for us it's just a plus. So we are looking at uh, really uh, working with you uh, in these areas, but at the same time, we want you to, address, to also help you because we need food security, but also we need energy security. And for the Southern Africa, we wanted to look at how the energy, the combination, because there has been a lot of issues, but if we don't address it at the regional level, uh, at the SADC level, so that we now look at what can be done. Botswana is a development concept, country, presents some of the most attractive attributes for any development practitioner. We are relatively small in size. We are fairly well organized. So every time you drop a dollar, the distance that dollar travels exceeds most because of our frugality and transparency, the efficacy that we demonstrate, and the track record we manifest. And so I invite you to be comfortable in sharing the dollars you have in whatever development experiment you might want to try out or even realize the fastest impact with the investment you put in. In other news, the president, Dr. Mokhezi Masisi, says the global economy is recovering at a slower pace than expected due to the adverse effects of COVID-19 pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war. He said this has led to a negative impact on the country's GDP. President Dr. Mokhezi Masisi made the statement at the ongoing Heads of Mission Conference in Khaboroni. Yenge Mali Moyo with the report. The COVID-19 and the Russian-Ukraine war are said to have exacerbated the unemployment rate, mostly affecting the youth, as well as slowing down efforts aimed at reducing income inequality and poverty. By the third quarter of 2023, the unemployment rate was recorded at 25.9%. What remains key to us, for us, is reorienting expenditures towards investment and human capital to raise productivity, accelerate industrialization, create jobs and diversify the economy from being led by minerals to a knowledge-based economy. Hopefully, this will also address the pockets of poverty that we continue to see in the country, which disproportionately affects our women children and our youth particularly. It is a great concern that we have been witness a set of blood conflicts from Sudan, Ukraine, Gaza, and many other parts of the world, which call all of us to embrace the commitment for dialogue and mutual understanding for the peaceful resolution of this conflict according to the international law. However, in the last two years, significant milestones that have positively impacted the lives of Botswana are said to have been achieved. In 2023, the informal sector contributed 3.2% to economic growth. We have created a fund known as Chema Chema Fund. We put in an injection, initial capital of 500 million pula. This is aimed at fundamentally transforming the informal sector and creating more employment opportunities to diversify the economy and create sustainable jobs. We must make agriculture more productive and appealing, 
especially to the youth and women and girls. It is for this reason that the necessary supporting infrastructure, including access roads to production centers, will be prioritized to transform the agricultural sector and rural economy. The president also emphasized the importance of collaborations between southern African countries and reviving their economies. Inge Malimoyo, BTV News, Khaburoni. The president, Dr. Mokhaizi Masisi, has urged heads of diplomatic missions to partner with the government and forge strategic partnerships to advance development aspirations and goals for the betterment of Botswana. President Masisi made these remarks at a state dinner last night for Botswana envoys and foreign envoys accredited to Botswana to thank them for their dedication and service. Tutlang Matlabapiri reports. On the night of the third day of the ongoing Heads of Diplomatic Missions Conference, President Masisi hosted both Busona envoys as well as the foreign ones accredited to this country for dinner. The dinner offered this country representatives a platform to exchange ideas essential for forging new cordial and productive relationships and further deepening existing ones between their countries that will create an enabling environment for advanced economy over and above a peaceful democracy. Your presence here is a testimony to our strong bilateral relations with your respective countries and international organizations. We do not take this relationship and engagement with you for granted. Hence, our constant dialogue with you from time to time. Currently, Botswana enjoys strong diplomatic relations at regional and international levels through bilateral and multilateral cooperation and collaborations, as evidenced by her leadership roles in regional and international organizations. It is also worth noting that through our interaction with the international community, about 100 Botswana are employed in regional and international organizations, such as the Southern African Development Community the World Bank, African Union, and the United Nations. As we journey towards 2036, I implore you, as Botswana's top diplomats in your countries of coverage, to engage our international partners for the attainment of the ideals of our national vision and sustainable development goals. Since the achievement of our development aspirations and goals cannot be the work of the government and diplomats alone, I wish to also appeal to and urge Botswana including those in the diaspora, to also take part in advancing these aspirations and goals. Meanwhile, these envoys are confident that the conference will attain the intended purpose. Envoys are deliberating on the ways and means of utilizing global engagement to achieve our strategic goals, including the attainment of high income status by 2036. Indeed, Botswana's national leadership has reaffirmed this commitment to multilateralism as AT itself indicated this evening, to global and regional economic integration, to global peace and security, to digital inclusion, and the deepening of friendship among nations. Your Excellence, in this regard, we'd like to congratulate and encourage to continue your efforts toward peace and stability in the region, on the African continent, and in the world. On the behalf of the Diplomatic Corps, we'd like to reiterate that you are fully committed to strengthen the relation of friendship and cooperation between our country and international organization with the governments and the people of the Republic of Botswana. Furthermore, President Masisi reaffirmed his government's commitment to cordial relations with these envoys' respective countries to secure a prosperous future for generations to come. Tlotlam Matlabapiri, BTV News, Khaburoni. The Botswana Stock Exchange and Stanbic Bank launched the Stock Market Simulator, an online tool that allows investors to practice their stock 
picking skills without investing real money. According to BSE's Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Tabelo Tseole, a financially literate nation is better equipped to make informed decisions, manage risks and seize opportunities, contributing to the overall prosperity and stability of the nation. Ungutule Tamahai reports. Financial literacy plays an important role in shaping the economic landscape of the nation. Despite its paramount importance, financial literacy remains an area of concern in Botswana, with many individuals, particularly the youth, lacking the necessary knowledge and skills to navigate the complexities of the financial landscape. We are going to start with secondary schools, uh, and then we move to tertiary schools, um, uh, after a uh, uh, high school in Simulator. And then there's going to be a national competition where every, every Mutswana or every person in the country is going to log into the simulator and then we give them visual portfolio and then they just simulate the market. This partnership is a clear sign of two entities who are interested in working together. The bank has sponsored the simulator to the value of to the value of one million four hundred and eighty-five thousand over three years. <laughs> Through interactive sessions and practical exercises, users will gain invaluable insights into investment principles, risk and portfolio management. The launch of a stock market simulator also underscores Bozola Stock Exchange's commitment to align with President Masi's national digital transformation strategy drive towards leveraging technology for the benefit of Botswana towards a knowledge-based economy. Financial uh, education is important, Baha'i, so I can't emphasize that enough. It's important that as Botswana we understand this aspect because from our engagements with um, even during the open days that we hosted around the country we we were, it was very clear that financial education is still very much a challenge and as an exchange technology is at the core of our activities we have not been shy in terms of saying that we are we want to be at par with uh, some of the developed exchanges around the world as far as technology. We are proud as a school that as of today, we have more than 25 learners who are seriously involved in the business of investment. We have one learner who, got, who was part of the position one, got the 2.5 uh, shares and was able to convince the parents and they bought him an extra 10,000 worth of shares. The stock market simulator competition is popular among secondary schools across the country and was introduced to cultivate a culture of investing at a grassroots level. Ungutleta Mahe, BTV News, Haburoni. Some Dukosi in the Shoshone district have expressed concern over shortage of resources. They say this hinders them from diligently executing their duties. They expressed this in a meeting with the Area Member of Parliament for Shoshong, Mr. Aubrey Lesasso. Love more, Mario, with the report. The Hosea's village leaders are mandated for ensuring that there is peace in their villages and expected to guide the community to positive behavior. Kosi Felix Kamani of Shoshong Village maintained that lack of resources such as vehicles and office space limits the execution of their roles effectively. So, 
The Member of Parliament for Shosho, who is also the Assistant Minister of Education, Mr. Obrili Sasso, encouraged Dikosi to prioritize their roles and share resources while still awaiting government to provide the necessary resources. <laughs> The Kosi were asked to desist from any political engagements and affiliation, but rather concentrate on their job of ensuring peace amongst the community. Love more Mario, BTV News, Shosho. The Member of Parliament for Buteti East, Mr. Setomo Latisizwe, has informed residents of Mukubilo that anticipated projects in the district, such as a clinic and electrification, will be done in the current financial year. Mr. Latisizwe said this when addressing a Kotla meeting in Mukubilo, Sabayazing Taboho. In his consultative meetings after the conclusion of the Parliament sitting, which discussed, among others, the budget speech, Mr. Latisizwe informed residents that some of the projects in the village have been funded and will commence this financial year. Maji a project to adude or a one a patal of the Motagasi or a good site in Zedisha. The higher to Ankara in Guacayone. A Kazazal or Dita is a Parohan, Mumuzi. Leg of rains which led to drought this year was the village leadership. Luba, Lele, Hore, Akito, Hore, Raho, Navahama, Neke, Yakake. Pepa <laughs> Residents complained over delays in allocation of residential plots by the land board. This <laughs> Mr. Lila, this is to implore the residents to utilize available government programs aimed at uplifting their lives. Svetsen Teboho, BTV News, Mokubilo. The Acting Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education and Skills Development, Ms. Neo Sabolao, 
has encouraged leadership in tertiary institutions to give students a global mindset, adding that producing graduates with a global mindset could help students attain jobs in other countries while residing in Botswana through the use of the internet. She said this while launching the tertiary institution's national roadshow program yesterday, Terry McCoy. In this digital era where technology is prevalent, it has become evident that more can be achieved through the use of internet. As the rate of unemployment is on the rise in this country, especially amongst the youth, it was advised that graduates could think globally when looking for jobs as there are many job opportunities in other countries that can be availed without people being physically present in those countries. The roadshow promises to give relevant information to potential students in both urban and rural areas. The clarion call for a mindset change is in essence a call to embrace the new ways of teaching, you know, such as the online learning. To what extent have we uh, taken advantage of um, the opportunities that have, have come by, such as Bonibo online learning? I know some of you have taken it further, like Bobo to University. Uh, they have embraced the distance online to a point where now they are attaching students online to international companies. And a number of them have secured employment, productive employment, with the companies they maintain when they are still with both and they maintain online. They are working in Botswana globally, earning salaries in international currency, uh, yeah, in Forex, yet they are resident here with their parents. About 25 tertiary institutions will participate in this roadshow with the aim to provide access to education to potential students. I must hasten to mention that today marks 10 years of our collaboration, 10 years of traversing Botswana as a collective with one sole objective of providing access to education. This is a great milestone for us that is worth noting. Uh, this goes to show the level of maturity displayed by institutions of higher learning in Botswana. Instead of engaging in competition, we instead opt to collaborate. This roadshow, which will commence on the 8th of April to the 3rd of May, will take place in 20 places around the country. Terry McCoying, BTV News, Khaboro. Kosorongwe is standing by to give us the latest in sports. Kosorong? Good evening, Komsa. How are you? I'm well, ma'am. How are you? Oh, I'm all good. Okay, please <laughs> proceed, ma'am. Thank you so much, Komsa, and greetings to you all. As she has already mentioned, I'm Kosorongwe bringing to you Busana Tonight Sports News. And with that, let's get straight into it and start with Busana Premier League updates. Khabarul United and Police 11 played to a goalless draw in the Botswana Premier League game played at the National Stadium last night. The draw leaves the Reds still seated on position 3 with 38 points, while the Jungle Kings occupy 13th slot with 20 points. Let us take a look at the highlights of the game. When you look at the second half, they were coming to us and we've created a low block to say at least if you can win the game, let's at least block them, try to get a point which will make us a step forward. I think it was very difficult, more so that when you look at their introductions, the small boys that are controlling the midfield, we resorted to say, no, okay, if we apply, keep on applying pressure and keep on being concentrated, we'll be able to catch them uh, probably on, on, on counter attacks. But we failed in numerous times. Unbelievable. Uh, we, we can't score without a goalkeeper. Uh, no goalkeeper, we can't score. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, with all the due respect to the open, this is a game where we will have scored easily, won it by four goals, five goals, easily. With the chances that we had, we can't convert. We work on these things, I mean, almost every day. But it is what it is, what can we do? We have a very disappointing result, for, for sure. We had a very, very average first half, uh, if not poor. 
Uh, yeah, well, then we came in the second half very good, very strong. We were just all over the opponent. Uh, we tried to use the width as much as possible. And uh, when we also re uh, reverted to our diamond 442 and tried to push the fullbacks forward as much as we could, and that worked for us. We put a lot of balls into the into the prime scoring area where we could have scored so many chances. I mean, really. But it was a good uh, you know, performance in the second half. Other BPL results, Urape United lost a 2-0 against the Murupule Wanderers, BDF 11 and Tafik played to a one all draw. Holy Ghost and bottom place in Ukraine United shared spoils, uh, up spoils after playing to a one all draw. Jordan Galaxy increased their lead at the top of the table after defeating security systems 2-0. 11 Angels won 2-1 against uh, Matebele FC, while Swa Flamingos and Township Rollers shared spoils after a goalless draw. Local motorbike sensation Ross Branch finished the eighth in the stage two of the ongoing BP Ultimate Rally. The stage was won by Nasa Abdullah Altia of France, followed by Portela Moraes in second position. Despite finishing eighth, Galahari Ferrari is hopeful for a good comeback and a better performance in the remaining races of the competition, which ends in three days. Hey guys, so that's uh, Prologue and Stage 1 in the bag and uh, yeah, interesting, interesting day for me. Prologue was so much fun. I really enjoyed my time on the bike and it was like a motocross track that was nicely watered and prepared and I uh, made a small mistake and had a little crash at the at the end of the Prologue, so lost a bit of time there and then uh, yeah, Stage 1 was um, yeah difficult. You know, we're not used to this kind of terrain and obviously that we're used to the wide open stuff, so going into the tight forests and stuff was different and uh, no, it wasn't too bad and yeah, 15 Ks before the end, I, I jumped off the track and had a, had a crash. Um, yeah, but but I'm okay. Got a got a small hole in my tongue and uh, a little bit of a, a hit to the head. But all in all, we're good and uh, ready ready for tomorrow. And it's uh, yeah, it's interesting in the weather. It's nice and slippery out there, right in the forest. And uh, yeah, so happy to to have so many supporters here. You know. Now shifting focus to the ongoing J30 Tennis World Tour hosted in Khaborini. Local sensation Magnawa has progressed to the semi-finals after defeating South African Ryan Zvoak in the quarter-finals. Nawa won all the two sets by 6-1 and 7-6 respectively. Kemal Munsusi reports. Nawa started the first set aggressively, piling pressure on his opponent to win it by a convincing 6-1 scoreline. Vowek, however, found his mojo back and started to pile pressure on Nawa, whose forehand was failing him for the most part. The South African eventually leveled the score, making it 6-6 to force the game into a tiebreaker. Nawa then went in all out to win the second set 7-6. In the first set, I was able to attack easily. I was able to keep the rallies going. I was serving really well. Then I managed to take it 6-1. Then second set, I had a good first game as well. I was playing the same way as first. And then from the second game onwards, I started to feel a bit more tight. I was playing a bit more nervous. I wasn't able to make four ends. And the set went really tight. It kept going 2-1, 2-2, 3-2, 3-3. I even went, but then I started to play all well at 3-all, I went 5-3 up, then I started to feel nervous again and he came back to 5-all, then I played a really good game to go 6-5 up, then he won the next game 6-all and then the tie break. I wasn't playing the best but I managed to keep my mental strong and I was just making sure I, I do the, the smart things and not try and force things that weren't happening, like my forehand it was refusing in the second and in the second set. So. I thought it was best if I just try and put it in instead of trying to go big on it. So I just started to make balls in the tie break and I managed to come out on top. Um, I started very slow in the first set. I think I was a bit of I was nervous, um, but and then in the second set I brought it back very well, um, coming from five three down to losing seven six. I think. In the ladies' quarterfinals, Chelsea Chakanyuka who went into the game with a shoulder injury, lost to love against South African Selena Joseph, who won both sets 6-1 and 6-3. Mm, I didn't play bad today. I think I played fairly well. She was just a bit more consistent and in the point more than I was. She didn't make as many errors as I did. 
Although my errors were mostly forced because she was a bit smart on the court. And if you're positive, it will be much higher chance that you play well. So then I just tried to like play percentage and like just play my game like I always do. I feel like um, I played well. The first few games was a bit tricky. Um, it was to use ideas at sometimes. And I feel like I pulled through. I just played solid and kept my head in it. In another quarterfinal game played today, Esimo Lefe failed to progress to the semi-finals after suffering a narrow defeat to Joshua Austin of Great Britain, losing the game by 6-2 for 6-7-5. and Jamil Muntusi, BTV Sport, Khaburun. A highly regarded local football administrator who has also served as BFA president, Ashford Mamelodi, yesterday launched a book titled Protecting the Game. Amongst the guests of honor at the launch was the Minister of Youth, Gender, Sport and Culture, Dumiso Rakhari, who congratulated Mamelodi on the achievement. Rakhari further said, considering the huge amount of experience Mamelodi has in football administration, his book will come in handy both as a source of information and a guide of aspiring and current football and administrators. As for Mamelodi was a BFA president from 1989 to 2000 and has also served in the Confederation of African Football, CAF. You remain among the few Botswana leaders that have walked the talk in terms of authoring a book, especially in this very interesting field of sport. These are therefore exciting times as we are not only increasing literature within our sport, football in this instance, but we are also building a body of knowledge that could potentially define our future trajectory. Dumba is no ordinary man in football, but rather a man of many trailblazing achievements and records. Amongst those are the first full-time Secretary General of Botswana Football Association. He deserves a round of applause for that. <laughs> the only Botswana to have been a COSAPA Secretary General and for now the longest serving SG for that body. Another round of applause. <laughs> and the first Botswana to work for FIFA so he has paved way for Refani and others. Another round of applause. <laughs> Throughout his four decades of football administration, Braesh has no doubt worked with tens, if not hundreds of leaders that not only shaped football in Botswana, the region and the continent, but some whom have gone on to hold very important positions, such as those of political leaders. And that is all that we had for you from Busana Tonati Sports Desk. Until we meet tomorrow, have a blessed night. Now let me bring it back to Komutso. Komutso. Thank you so much, Khosaro. It must make for a good, good reading. Four mm. decades oh, yes. um, in football, having served at CAF and FIFA. Mm. He is actually a walking institution, an a an living indeed. legend. Oh, yes, he's an icon indeed. And I believe all the administrators and all the football um, aspiring coaches will definitely learn a lot from the book. Uh, thank you so much. That was Khosaro Ngwe giving us the latest in sports. Let's take a final look at stories leading the way this evening. The nation converged across the country to remember those who perished on road in road accidents. The world economy said to be growing at a slower pace than expected. And in sports, GU and Police 11 play to a goalless draw in a Botswana Premier League encounter. That's all that we had for you in our news bulletin this evening. VTV News, Iganyarona, hashtag BW Mindset Change, at Change Change. Up next is the weather update.
evening and welcome to tonight's weather forecast. I'm Pearl Victoria Khusiani. Let's start off by looking at rainfall amounts recorded this morning at 8 a.m. We have 23 millimeters at Inaloholo Primary School, 10 at Chanoha Primary School, 7 at Tani Metrological Station, 5 at Mohoditane Kotla and Lezwai Primary School. 4 millimeters at Habroni Game Reserve and Morama Junior Secondary School in Joanne. 3 millimeters at Good Hope Metrological Station, Sakaila Junior Secondary School, and Tankani Primary School. 3 millimeters at Mangkodi Mang Kotla Lizebe Primary School, 2 at Shakawe Metrological Station, and Kotolaname Primary School. 1 millimeter at Kanahas Research, Titeng Primary School, and Mohobane Primary School. Looking at tonight's solar image, it's showing mostly partly cloudy to cloudy conditions over much of Botswana. And for tomorrow, we're expecting mostly partly cloudy countrywide with isolated thunder showers. In the morning, warm temperatures over Hansi, Kalahadi, southern southeast Katling and Gwening. Of around 16 over much of Kalahadi, 18 over Lepepe, and 19 over Mahalape. But for the rest of the country, mostly hot temperatures are expected, ranging between 20 to 21 degrees Celsius. And in the afternoon, we're expecting hot temperatures over Chobe of around 35. But for the rest of the country, warm temperatures are expected. 27 over Nojani, joining in Khaburoni, 28 over much of Hansi and Kalahadi, and 32 over Lithakani, Francistown, and Maitengwe. Over the weekend for southern southeast Katling and Gwening, we're expecting partly cloudy conditions with isolated thunder showers. But on Sunday, cloudy conditions with scattered thunder showers and mild temperatures of around 23 to 26 degrees Celsius. Over Hansi and Kalahadi, partly cloudy conditions on Saturday with isolated thunder showers. But on Sunday, scattered thunder showers and cloudy conditions are expected. Warm temperatures of around 27 to 30 degrees Celsius are also expected. Over Choban and Gami land on Saturday, we're expecting partly cloudy conditions. But on Sunday, cloudy conditions are expected with isolated thunder showers. Hot temperatures of around 33 to 35 degrees Celsius. Over central and northeast, we're expecting partly cloudy conditions on Saturday with isolated thunder showers. But on Sunday, cloudy conditions with scattered thunder showers with mild to warm temperatures of around 24 to 29 degrees Celsius. That's the weather forecast. Have yourself a good night. The Botswana Stock Exchange and Stan Big Bank launched the Stock Market Simulator, an online tool that allows investors to practice their stock picking skills without investing real money. According to BSE's Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Tapelo Tsaule, 